this is an update on the how the chatterbox project is going and um, I've got a new prototype put together which is much smaller than what I've been working with before um, and it's also built around this uh, custom PCB that makes them really easy to assemble and, and kind of lays the groundwork for manufacturing a bunch of them if, if I decide to do that but uh, it so the chatterbox is a secure off-grid texting device that uses lower frequencies and meshing it doesn't use cell phones at all um, it, it can use other things besides LoRa. I've got a LoRa antenna on this one. This one I've got an internal antenna. Um, I'm going to test out the range on. Um, and and actually, the way that I the the adapter I have attached to that um, will let you use bigger antennas, directional antennas, all kinds of things. So every single one of these devices that there, there's not. Um, certain devices for doing bridging and things like that. Um, every device can store packets securely, can forward them, can figure out a path of where, where the, to help, help the message get to where it needs to go. They all use symmetric and asymmetric encryption. So if I was to broadcast a message to the entire group, it's going to use uh, symmetric encryption using a shared key. Um, if I were to send it directly to this person, um, it's going to use asymmetric encryption so no, no one else can read it. Uh, they, these devices, they also uh, become aware of how the group is, the connections between the group to, to help them do the meshing. So for instance, uh, this one is just charging. Uh, but if I was to turn it on, uh, right now you can see this is flashing red. Maybe you can see that. You can see it probably a little better on the back. Uh, but that means there's no devices around to do meshing with. Uh, but if I turn this on, I'm going to use a pencil to do that. Okay. So when I turn this on, within a, a minute or two, um, or maybe even less, it should become aware that there's another device nearby. And as soon as it becomes aware of that, uh, these two can start working together as necessary to help push messages along, store messages for each other, things like that. Um, so I've also, I've put the, the back of this prototype, I'm not sure how I'm going to uh, do it for, for, for the final version, but it's clear so that you can just at a glance, like if you have this sitting in a window or something, um, you can see if it's got a connection. I can make it flash other colors. So like green means it's a very good connection. And since these are like six inches apart, I, I would hope it's good. Uh, it, blue is pretty good. Uh, and then there's yellow and red and, and I can play around with that. I can also make it flash co different colors or in a different pattern, a quick flash or something. If, if you've got a message since you last looked at it. Um, so you don't have to even check it um, so I can lock the screen and I'm still gonna you know the lights still gonna tell me if I've got a message or something to look at and even with the screen locked it will do the meshing it needs to do to, to help other devices in the group so the, these only have LoRa that you do I can put Ethernet um, in it but uh, that, that's I'm not sure if I'm going to end up doing that or not. Uh, I also have a plug on the side. Uh, these are still pretty raw. Obviously, I wouldn't. That wouldn't be a plug that someone would want to deal with. But um, you can wire two of these together. So, for instance, if I had one connected to a huge antenna um, at the top of my house, um, I could connect that to another wire it to another device in my house and the whole group will learn that you know if the if the big antenna is hooked up to this one as a group they will learn uh to get a message to this guy this is a good one to go through and then this one will learn if i want to get a message anywhere i'm going to pass it through that guy they just kind of learn 
and if you add a new device to the group, uh, they all figure it out and figure out how best to use it. Um, it's I, I've got a lot of testing to do with that, but it's uh, it's pretty interesting. So uh, the components involved, um, like I said, uh, I did have I at first I was wiring a bunch of stuff together. That's a <laughs> not not a good option. Uh, so I've got this custom PCB that lets me quickly solder things to the board. And if I do manufacture a bunch of these, uh, then I wouldn't be doing this. Um, but but it's a necessary step. Uh, I, I already have a couple things I need to change about it. Um, but anyways, so the components are mostly Adafruit components um, there's there's no operating system it's just firmware so that uh, to me is a good thing because you don't have to worry about something in your OS uh, kind of spying on what you're doing um, you don't have to worry if there's a kill switch built into your OS or that that maybe gets exploited by a cyber attack or something um, but yeah, it's got a real-time clock, which is for the digital signatures um, to, to be reliable. The, the Ethernet is, the Wi-Fi is optional. I keep saying Ethernet. The Wi-Fi is optional. Um, I'm not sure if most people are going to want that or not, but it will. If you if you use Wi-Fi, it will use uh, UDP um, multicast. So that when you send a message and it, your device decides to route it through Wi-Fi, because that's a, a good option for wherever it's going, then it, it will basically just bounce off your router. It won't, won't leave your network or anything like that. You don't have to have internet working for that to work. Uh, the main, this RFM95 is uh, what I use for the LoRa. Uh, FRAM, everything's stored encrypted on here with your password if you set one, if not, uh, it, it uses a different method, but still en encrypts everything on here. And then the Adafruit. Uh, this is the M0, but actually I'm using the uh, the M4, which has a lot more memory, but looks the same. And uh, yeah, and basically I just uh, you know follow the instructions, put the things in the right places. The screen goes on the back, and then. Well, I drop them into this 3D printed case, and that is pretty much it. Other than uh, installing the firmware and and pairing it with the with the cluster, if I do that, there is a battery also. And I've got a lot of testing to do, so uh, but just wanted to give an update and uh, to give you an idea size wise. Uh, you can definitely fit this in your pocket, especially if. Uh, if the um, internal antenna turns out to be a good option, this is not going to be there unless you want to hook it up to something, uh, a bigger antenna. Uh, but uh, you probably want inches. So the widest, it's about an inch. It gets a little skinnier. And uh, the body of this thing is uh, what, about four inches. Yeah, you definitely can put that in your pocket. Um, so anyway, that was, that was a quick update. So I will probably have some interesting demos with the uh, testing, the way that I'm doing the meshing with this. Uh, I'm going to be able to do some interesting uh, things that, that I've not seen done before. So should be pretty cool.